A combinational circuit is defined by the following three Boolean functions. We have F1, F2, and F3. We are going to design the circuit with a decoder and external OR gates. So before we design our circuit, we're not going to get too crazy. Instead, first what we're going to do is we're going to make a truth table for our F1, F2, and F3. Being the smart CPE and the smart CS students we are, we know that we have three inputs just by looking at this. We have input X, we have input Y, and lastly, we have input Z. We're going to draw uh, some columns just to separate them. And now we're going to write in all of the possible inputs. We first have 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. And then we're going to have 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. And then we'll go through our x, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1. That's the way I like to fill out the truth tables. And now we are going to add our outputs. So we are going to have F1, we're going to have F2, and then we're going to throw an F3 in here too. And now I'm just going to make a table, or I'm going to make the table a little bit nicer. That way everything's generously spaced out. With our table labeled and everything, we can start writing out our functions. So first, we have an F1. And our F1, if we write this out properly, is equal to an X or a Z. And this is all under a not. And then we're going to have plus X and Y and Z. So when we look at this, well, the first thing that we're looking at, we're looking at this first row, we have 0, 0, 0. And so plugging this in here, this zeroes out, because if one thing zero in an and, everything is zero. But this is ORed with this. So we have an X or Z. Now, this is going to yield a zero, but since we have a not on top, it's going to reverse uno this, and we get a one. So our F1 is one. Let's look at the next one. Well, inside of here, we are going to make this zero again. Whenever we have an X, Y, or Z for this F1 as zero, this will automatically be zero because all of them have to be ones for this is true since this is an AND logic. This is really what we're going to focus on. So we have an X or a Z. Now the Z is a one, so this will be one. But since we need to invert it, we're going to reverse, you know, flip it, and this is going to be a zero. Now we can look at the next one. We have zero, one, zero. This, of course, again, is going to be zero. That's the last time we're going to mention it until it becomes a one. Um, we have this X plus Z. And so both of these are going to be zero because X and Z are zero here. So this is going to yield a zero. We're going to flip it because of this not, and we're going to have a one. Now we have this zero, one, one. The Z is going to be a one. So we're going to have to flip this and it's a zero. Now we have one, zero, zero. This is going to yield us a one. We got to flip it. So it's going to give us a zero. And then for this next one, we have one, zero, one. So um, this again is zero. And then coming back in here, we have a one and a one. So both of these are one, our X and our Z are one. So that means the output for here is going to be one. We're going to flip this. So it's a zero. And then we have this one, one, zero. Same thing here. We have a one inside of here. So we're going to flip it. It's going to be a zero. And now we have all ones inside of here. This is going to yield a one. We have to flip it with this not. So this is actually going to be a zero. But this is going to give us a one. So we're going to have a one right here. So in our F1, we have these three min terms. Remember, a min term is where our output is one. Now we have our F2 that we're going to look at. And so our F2 is going to be equal to, we're going to have X plus Z. This is in parentheses. And we have a not plus an X not and Y and Z. So this X has to be zero while these have to be one because this not operator will flip it for it to be a one for this entire thing to be a one. Otherwise, if either of these are untrue, then it will be a zero. So looking at this, oh, and this is still gonna be the same thing. 
So looking at this, we have 0, 0, 0. Well, this is going to be 0, so we're not looking at this right now. That's automatically zeroed out. We have this x plus z. These are both 0, so it's going to flip, and it's going to be a 1. Now we have 0, 0, 1. So looking at this, our y here is 0. This becomes 0, so all of this is a 0. So we're going to look at the not over x plus z. Um, our z is a 1. So this is going to give us a 1, but we need to take the not of it because of this up here. So it's a 0. So far we have 1, 0. Now let's look at the next one. We have 0, 1, 0. Now in here, our z is 0, so it breaks this. This 0 is out again. Looking inside of here, these are both zeros. So we're going to take the not of this, and it's a 1. We have 1, 0, 1. Now we're looking at this next part. We have x, y, z, 0, 1, 1. Um, looking at this first, our x naught is 0. That's good. And our y, z are 1. So we're going to have an output of 1 here. Now looking at this one, we have x plus z. Our z is 1. But we're going to take the naught of this up here. And so this is a 0. Now we have a 0 ORed with a 1. Well, a 0 ORed with a 1 is just going to give us a 1 because it's OR, this OR, that. And so we have a 1 here. Now we have 1, 0, 0, and this will give us a 0. This will give us a 0. And if we were to keep plugging this in using the same exact method, we would get zeros for all of these. And just by looking at it, without even plugging anything in, we know that this is 0. And that's because of this 1 out front. This x is a 1, but remember when we wrote this out, we wrote that our x naught has to be a 0 for this to be 1. Otherwise, it will be 0. And so this is all taken care of. This is automatically zeroed out. And then all you do is just look in here um, for the rest of these. And since our x right here is 1, we're always going to have a 1 in here, but we're always going to have to flip it. And we're always going to have to flip it because of this not operator, and one flipped is a zero. Now we can move on to our F3. So F3 is going to be X anded with our Y naught, and then this is anded with Z. This is ORed with, we have our X plus Z, and then with a not over top of them. So this is similar to the other two, and uh, let's, let's write this out. So this our x has to be 1 and our z has to be 1 and then our y not has to be a 0 for all this to be 1 otherwise it will be a 0 so let's keep that in mind and then um, this last part is the same as the rest of them so knowing this what we can do is we can say well everything that has a y not that's a 1 inside of here it's going to be a zero. We know that because if we flip the one, it's a zero. So that means if we have and zero anded with all of this is making this entire thing zero. So whenever we have a Y in here, that's a one, that's kind of suspicious. And we're going to look at that and say, well, that's going to automatically zero this out. So now all we're going to do is look at this. And for x or z, one of these, at least one, has to be 1. If one of them is 1, we take the not over it, and the not of 1 is 0. And so keep that in mind when we're going through here. So we have this x, y, z here. Well, this is going to be zeroed out because our x and our z are zeros. Now, this x plus z is 0, but we have to not it, so it's going to be a 1. We have the not of 0 instead of the not of 1, and this gives the opposite answer. Next we have 0, 0, 1. And so our x and z are 0, or our x is 0. So this is going to be zeroed out. And then looking at this part, we are going to have a 0 or 1. So we're going to give a 1. 1 not is 0. So this is a 0. We have 1, 0. This next one, we have 0, 1, 0. And so plugging this into here, it's automatically zeroed out. Plugging it into this next part, x plus z, we're going to have a 0, 0, not is just 1, so we are going to have a 1 here. Next we have 0, 1, 1. This breaks this pattern, so that's automatically zeroed out. 
we have a one inside of here, we have to take the not of that, so it is a zero. Next, we have one zero zero, breaks this pattern. And remember, whenever it breaks this pattern, this is zero. So we're not looking at it here. Then we have x not z. So one of these has to be one for it to equal a zero. Looking at this, we have our x is one. So the output in here is one. We're gonna take the not of that and that is zero. So we have a zero here as well. This next one, we have one zero one. It fulfills this. So we have a one here. And this is ORed with this, so whatever this is, it doesn't matter, one or zero, we're gonna have a one. Now we have one, one, zero. This is zero. And also for this next one, it's zero as well. So both of these are zeroed out for these next two. We have this X plus Z with a not over it. Well, for both of the next ones, X and X are both ones. So that means we are gonna have a one here. Take the not over that, so that's zero. So we're gonna have zero and zero here. We've completed our truth table. Now we're going to design the circuit with a decoder and external OR gates. From previous problems, we know that a decoder looks like a rectangle. And we can write this as decode er. And we have three inputs. So we're going to have our X, we're going to have our Y, and then we're going to have our Z. And this is going to become A0, A1, and A2. And then we have these outputs. We're going to have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And this is how many indexes we have here. Remember, uh, this is also something in the previous problem. Encoding is little to many and decoding is many to little. So we have decoding. We're going to go from all of these to few. The few is three. So we are going to have an OR gate. It says to do an OR gate actually in the instruction. It says to do an OR gate in the instructions, so that's why we are using an OR gate. Our OR gate is going to be out here, like this. An OR gate has two inputs. It's curved, and then it has an output. And our output is just going to be F1. And we're going to do this three times for our F2 and our F3. And so these are our Fs, our outputs. And now we can start wiring things up. We're only focused on the min terms. All of them have a min term at index zero. So index zero is gonna be a pretty busy boy. We're going to make index zero uh, color coded as red, so it's easier to see. And so it's also, actually, um, we're taking three inputs here. One, two, and three. And the reason why we have three inputs here is because we have three inputs here. My mistake. We are connecting the zero to our F1 and then we are connecting it to our F2, and then we are connecting it to the F3. And this is because all of our Fs have ones, they're high when we're at index zero. Next, we are going to look at index one. Well, all of them are low at index one, so we're not gonna include anything here. At index two, all of them are high. So we're going to color code index two to be this nice, cool blue, and we're going to connect the blue to all of them. Index two is connected here, index two is connected here, and then index two is connected here. Now we go down another row, we see that F2 is high here, but only F2. And it also might be easier if we write out the indexes. So we have index zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And I'll just write this as column I for indexes. And this third row, third index, we have one for F2. So we're gonna find index three right here, and then we're going to just have it go to our F2, and it's only going to our F2. Now we look at a row down, two rows down, we have our F3 high here, and that's at row five index, so index five. And then I'm going to do this in a nice kind of aqua. So in row five, we have it looking like this, and it's going to go straight to our F3, and only the F3. So it'll go like this into our F3. Now we are going to look at our next, where we have our F1. It's going to be the seventh column. So we're skipping the sixth column just as we did the one and the two. And so we're going to look at this uh, seven, 
and then we're going to connect it straight to our F1. So we're going to go from here, down here, and then in here. And that is how our combinational circuit defined with the three Boolean functions with a decoder and external OR gates would look like.